This event is brought to you by Amazon, Home Street, Ron and Wanda Crockett, Charlie's Produce, and Zevenbergen. Proud sponsors also include UPS, Kaiser Permanente, and The Boeing Company. Additional support comes from Bagley Phelps, Express Employment Professionals, and Pure Insurance. Child Haven would like to express immense gratitude to all of our financial sponsors, volunteers, supporters, and partners for helping us overcome childhood adversity and trauma. Welcome to Healing Through Connection, our annual fundraising luncheon for Child Haven. I'm Michelle Lee and I'm your host today and I am so grateful to spend time with you on behalf of this amazing organization. Before we get too far in the program, we'd like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded ancestral land of the first people of Seattle, including the Coast Salish and Duwamish people past and present and honor with gratitude the living descendants and land itself. Please take the time to get to know your indigenous neighbors by participating in many of their cultural celebrations open to the wider community. So again, thank you for joining me today. For over a hundred years, Child Haven has been empowering children and families undergoing adversity and trauma to heal through relationships. For the next 30 minutes, we hope you'll be inspired as you hear stories about the power of finding voice and agency to live out a life we all deserve, a life where children can grow to be healthy, connected, and empowered adults. Our goal today is to raise at least $150,000 of critical funds for Child Haven. So on your screen is the link that I'm asking you to contribute at, but you can also find this link in the chat bar. The collective impact of what we do today will make families and communities stronger. So now I'd like to introduce you to Child Haven CEO, John Botton. Thank you, Michelle. It's been said that we don't end up in this work by accident. We each have reasons that connect us to the core purpose of the organizations we are drawn to. And that's certainly true for me. There are at least three main reasons why I'm so committed to the work of Child Haven. My first why is about prevention. My passion has always been families of very young children because that is where we address upstream root causes as opposed to downstream symptoms. Early childhood is the time of greatest promise because this is when the architecture of the developing brain is most receptive to experiences and relationships, those that can be both hurtful and helpful. My second why is about creating equitable opportunity. I have been very fortunate to have had a life filled with opportunity, and I believe that every child, actually every human on earth, deserves the same, and yet we know that is not the case. We know that systems routinely fail children and families and have for far too many generations. Child Haven is working towards creating equity, not only through our programs and services, but through partnerships designed to address the systems that prevent equal opportunity in the first place. My third why is a desire to help change the narrative. It can be comforting to pretend that childhood trauma and adversity only happen to other people. It's not in my neighborhood, and it's certainly not in my home, but in reality, trauma and adversity exist in every neighborhood. In fact, my family and I have actually suffered horrific tragedy that reverberates through each of us every day. I'm on a long path of healing and I'm fortunate to work alongside many others on similar journeys. Above all, I'm grateful for our community of supporters and investors who make our why possible. Together, we can heal through connection. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you so much, John. You know, some of you might be wondering why I am so passionate about Child Haven. And part of my childhood experience involved foster care. And not only that, but some of the worst racism and adversity that I ever faced happened during that time as well. So I had support and critical support that allowed me to dream and also achieve those dreams. And that is what Child Haven does every day. So with that being said, I'd like you to hear now from Inger.
Vivian is a five-year-old, very energetic, very happy, very caring kindergartner. And she's, she talks a lot, she's social. She's a very, very sweet girl. I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. And as a result of that, I was in active addiction. I was all alone, I was homeless. Um, in my ninth month of pregnancy, I was living on Aurora. You know, I wanted to get help, but I thought that if I, if I tried to go get help, you know, would they put me in jail? But the first time that I saw Vivian, that was the day that I decided, you know, I'm, I'm changing my life for the better. And I'm and if I if I can't do it for myself, then I'm gonna do it for Vivian first. So I was in family treatment court and my social worker recommended that Vivian go to Child Haven. When Vivian first started at Child Haven, she was very, very shy. And she wasn't talking much. You know, they would say we're waiting for Vivian to come out of her shell. And as she formed these relationships with her teachers, and as she started feeling comfortable and trusting these people, she really started like coming out of her shell. She started thriving. She started learning to ask for help, learning to advocate for herself. And because I was able to witness that with her teachers, it was also teaching me ways that I would be able to effectively, positively communicate with her and interact with her. Child Haven helped to ensure that I could be a great parent to Vivian without the help of Child Haven. <laughs> Having Child Haven there for Vivian, I knew that she was in a really, really safe place and that when she was able to work on herself, I was able to take the time to go through outpatient. I was able to really, really work on myself and now I have five and a half years um, in recovery. Every year there are two children that are chosen from the graduating class if they believe that your child will need extra services throughout life and they are given a mentor to basically have a relationship with them until they graduate from high school. So Hannah is Vivian's mentor and I'm looking forward to seeing how Vivian's relationship with her develops. Child Haven changed my life. It's like you start going there and it's kind of like oh, I got one. you're a piece of clay and they help mold you into something that, you know, you're able to love. It's an amazing experience, the whole Child Haven experience. Wow, I hope Inger and Vivian's story inspires you to dig deep today. When you give today, you are providing essential support for children and families like Vivian and Inger, who are working hard to overcome adversity and trauma. Please give any amount that is meaningful to you. If you are wondering how much to give, here are some ways that your dollars will support children and families. At the express level, your gift of $150 provides Art With Heart creative expression materials for healing and building resilience after loss or trauma. At the council level, your gift of $300 provides counseling services for families facing adversity. At the support level, your gift of $500 supports developmental therapies, helping young children reach their important milestones. At the Flourish level, your gift of $1,500 supports a family in our wraparound program, a multi-generational service for young children and their families that blends therapeutic support with mental health services. Child Haven knows it takes a village to fulfill their commitment on elevating relational health in all the places where children live, learn, and play. That means partnering not just with parents, but also the entire community. It would not be a Child Haven event without mentioning one of our community partners, Cheryl Jackson-Williams. 
Cheryl? Thank you, Michelle. I am standing here before you today as a super fan of Child Haven. There are so many reasons to be a super fan of Child Haven. Their wonderful programming that they do, how they partner with families, their compassion, the way that they engage with the community, and also that they center equity. So initially, I uh, started engaging with Child Haven as part of my previous life in my work as a family preservation services therapist. We partnered with Child Haven to be able to make sure that we were meeting the needs of the family so that they could be as strong as possible and really be able to thrive. I'm now in the Skyway West Hill community. Skyway has been an area that has had divestment um, and hasn't had a lot of resources. Now we're sitting at the table where Child Haven is leveraging its understanding as a nonprofit with BIPOC grassroots agencies and community members, and they're leveraging their know-how in regards to great engagement, how do you run operationally, but also too, how do you advocate, and that's so important. Child Haven, you guys are accomplices in this work. You're not allies. Allies say, I'll stand with you. Um, I give you my support. It's all verbal. Accomplices, they leverage their positions, they leverage their influence, they leverage their power, even if that means that they may lose access to something. And for us in the community, especially BIPOC members of the community, that's really important. That shows that you really do stand with us and you're willing to get in there and put in a good fight. If we want a thriving neighborhood, we need to make sure that the base of that neighborhood, which are our families, are thriving as well. Think about what kind of funding would that take and what percentage of whatever you have to give can you give to be able to impact that. You know, these folks can be our neighbors. They can be our child's friend at their school. They can be someone that we see at the library. And when we think about that, everyone matters. Thank you so much, Cheryl. As she mentioned, these children are our neighbors, friends, family, our community. And what we do today will impact the health of that community and then ultimately impact each and every one of us. So we are very excited to announce a matching gift. An anonymous donor has made it possible for all gifts of $300 or more to be matched up to $100,000. So think about the gift that you made last year and consider doubling it. If this is your first time to join a Child Haven event, please consider doubling that suggested minimum of $150 to $300. This match means that your gift can really go the extra mile for children who count on Child Haven each and every day, and especially those who have faced unprecedented mental health challenges due to the pandemic. The Children's Hospital of New Orleans is one such partner. When the pandemic hit, uh, everything changed for the children at Children's Hospital in, in New Orleans. Visitation was restricted to just one adult per patient. The patients also were not allowed to leave their room for their own safety and for uh, the hospital's safety. And then for us in the Child Life and Creative Therapies Department, specifically with the Arts and Healthcare Program, I wasn't allowed to go into a lot of the rooms. That limitation was, was heartbreaking and, and really difficult. We had to get really creative with how we could connect with our patients and, and caregivers throughout the hospital. So we decided that we would take over one of the channels on the hospital's TVs. We were in desperate need of any sort of um, art content and art video content that was to a higher caliber and to a higher standard. Art with Heart provided wonderful content, um, easily accessible and age appropriate for all of the patients that we have in the hospital. Being in the hospital is a difficult experience, especially for children when they're wanting to express themselves and wanting to find their own unique voice. Um, and art gives them that access, especially during uh, pandemic times. It's 
so important that they were able to get that space and be given those opportunities and those outlets um, to really tell people what they were going through or, or share their message or just share with each other in whatever way they could. One of the projects that I really, really enjoyed was a lesson plan all about paper chains and um, using colors and positive messaging and things like that. The patients were then able to write whatever wishes or inspirational messages they wanted to on each of the little strips of paper, loop them all together and make beautiful paper chains that they hung on their doors uh, to share with other patients and, and staff. It was a beautiful experience to walk down the hallway and see all of these colorful art decorating our walls. Art is an incredible way to find confidence when you are maybe feeling a little low. And so having that opportunity for self-expression is, is vital. The Art with Heart lesson plans and the Chinola Family Channel uh, gave them an opportunity to look forward to something every week and having that opportunity for success and to make something you can be proud of is a wonderful part of the healing process. So this wonderful video highlights the New Orleans Children's Hospital, but more importantly than that, it highlights the children and families of New Orleans. When I reflect on this video, it, it pauses me to think about a couple of primary things. One is how the work at Child Haven absolutely centers children and families, and the second, as you can see, is this ability and this desire and this intention at Child Haven to adapt services and programs to what the needs are. And in this case, when those needs are dictated by something unprecedented and absolutely out of our hands. I am a nurse by training. I have known of Child Haven for, for many years, being born and raised in Seattle. I hope what you saw and what you felt was how Child Haven was really able to mitigate risk um, within the context of a pandemic. Children need to play, children need to express themselves, they need to express a wide range of emotions, they need to be able to tell people who they are, they are not just a patient, they are a, a complex and wonderfully human, sometimes really little person, who needs a creative outlet. What I have seen from Child Haven, particularly over the last few years, is really this desire and this leaning in on, on being more creative and how services are delivered, who we are partnering with, looking to other experts in the field, not thinking that we have all the answers. With Always being like science-driven, data-informed, family-centered, but being willing to think more outside of the box. And I think, again, with Art With Heart um, and adapting to New Orleans and what their needs were, you see this in kind of real time, like how that works. So I hope that you will join me in doing what you can to support Child Haven so that this isn't the only highlighted story that there will be. Um, there will continue to be many of these and, and, and what we will see with these are benefits to children and families and, and community. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Beth. I think that you will agree that stories like these are the reasons we support Child Haven. You know, every dollar you give today will go to strengthen families, prevent childhood trauma, and prepare children for a lifetime of well-being. And as we just learned, it's not just children in our immediate community, but across the country in places like New Orleans. Please donate to the link below and help us meet or exceed our goal of $150,000 today so that we can support more children, more families, and more communities. At this time, I would like to welcome Dr. Megan Beers, Child Haven's Chief Programs and Operations Officer. Thank you, Michelle. It's always great to see you at Child Haven events. When folks hear about childhood trauma and about our work, often what they think of first is what I call big T trauma. One big bad thing that happens in a child's life that changes the course of their development. While that's certainly true for some of the little ones we serve, what's much more common is that the children and families we partner with experience chronic adversity and toxic stress that stems from systems of oppression and the instability that results from generations of community trauma. Poverty, housing and food insecurity, racism, all of these things create toxic stress for little ones, for their important grown-ups, and for our community. We know from the science that this little t trauma, named not to minimize its impact, but to acknowledge its repetitive daily nature, has a significant and sustained impact on bodies and brains. 
particularly early in their development. Why I do this work is a little messy. I'm a clinical researcher by training. I was trained to look at the data. And there is plenty of data to drive coming to work every day in an organization that is committed to supporting the mental health of our youngest community members. But honestly, what drives me is a deeper held belief, a belief that is backed by data for sure, but also lives in my own body, a belief that is driven by my experience as a mama, as a daughter, as a therapist who has spent many hours sitting with little ones and their important grown-ups in moments of great pain and uncertainty. This belief is the knowing that each of our experience as babies and toddlers lives on in our bodies. We typically don't have words for these earliest experiences, but they live in our body as adults, in our sense of safety, in our capacity to trust, in how we connect with other humans. Because of that, early childhood mental health happens everywhere. It is not just the business of therapists. It happens in homes, in classrooms, with grandmas and grandpas, in the pediatrician's office, at the park and grocery store, wherever children and families are. I am driven to do this work to make children's mental health all of our business, central to our goals, our responsibility, and the core of our community. As you know, Child Haven serves kids and families across the lifespan. With that, I'd like to now introduce you to Justin Salazar. He works as one of our teen therapists through our outpatient behavioral health program. Imagine what it's like when you're a teenager, especially when you have like issues around poverty, uh, race, gender, sexual orientation, all those things, but none of the privileges of being an adult where your opinion isn't as valid you're too young to know better, you, you're gonna grow out of it. Teenagers constantly talk about this idea of being ignored, being invalidated, this idea of being ghosted. So a couple years back, I was asked to uh, consult on a play uh, called Ghosted through Kaiser and Seattle Children's Theater and other King County agencies around teenagers and depression and anxiety. I can remember being happy. Ghosted allows principals and faculty to really pursue kids in their school in a much larger scale to start the conversation around what does it look like to support our teens. The first time I got to see this play was in Seattle Children's Theater and it was in front of a live audience. It was amazing. It was simply amazing. They were raw, they were real, but the way that we facilitated conversations was not fake. So well done. And the teens who showed up, the kids who showed up were engaged, asking questions. The fact that they were asking questions was proof that it was working. I feel like providing a space for these youth to talk, to be real, to be vulnerable, it cracks the shell that this world has been causing them to harden. I just found out that this play that was targeted towards King County has been seen by over 40,000 teens in Hawaii, Washington, California, Colorado, Georgia, Oregon, and I'm so proud of this thing that I had a fraction of help in. In the end, partnerships, working with other organizations, programs, all those things is one of the best ways to help our communities and I feel like Child Haven does a good job of that. As a teen who experienced adversity, I can remember some critical points in my life when I remember thinking, okay, this changed how I saw myself, or in some cases, this changed my worldview. You know, I was lucky that I had so many supports, people like Justin, who really helped empower me to achieve my dreams. Every dollar you give today will ensure that every child is well nurtured by family and community. So if you can do it, please stretch. Remember, thanks to a generous donor, every gift over $300 will be matched up to $100,000. Thank you, Michelle. Speaking of matches, we are also lucky enough to live in a region where many companies have a matching gift program. If you work for one of those companies, please indicate that in your gift as it will double your contribution to this amazing organization. You know at Child Haven, 
Every child and family's journey is unique, but they are all facing some sort of adversity, whether it is housing insecurity, depression, the fear of deportation, abuse, institutional racism, or a life-changing health diagnosis. They all have different circumstances that have led them through our doors. But the desired outcome is the same, healing relationships that empower each child and family to thrive when they leave Child Haven. You are now about to see one such story. So Mason is a little fireball. He loves any social interactions. He's so into fire trucks, into ambulances, police cars. And the one thing that he's really into right now is cooking. It's really funny because my husband is a chef and I cook all the time. So it's kind of, it just makes sense that he likes to cook and have tea parties. As a parent, when you give birth, everyone thinks you're giving birth to this healthy baby. And for me, it wasn't like in the movies. It was terrifying, you know, to have my child be so early and have a brain bleed. I didn't think that he was gonna make it until we left the NICU. We've been in the NICU for like 103 days and every single day was a fight. They told us that he could have a possibility of cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy for Mason, um, it actually affects his lower limbs. That means, you know, he can't balance very well. He's not able to dress himself yet either. So because Mason has been in therapy since he's been born, um, I just knew when I moved to Seattle that I needed to find an organization that could help us have therapy for Mason. I did my research and Child Haven actually was able to give speech and physical therapy, which are the two things that Mason needed. So coming to Child Haven, you know, off the bat, when Courtney met Mason, it was like, hi, I'm Courtney, nice to meet you. Like, what's your name? And definitely let him take the lead. I think that was a really big impact for Mason to kind of feel safe and be like, okay, this therapist is here for me and she's not gonna make me do something I don't wanna do. But also she will challenge him so that he does, you know, work on his skills that he needs to accomplish. So for Courtney and Mason, uh, she really kind of focused on helping him vocalize uh, what he needs and what he wants instead of just kind of screaming. Yeah, there was definitely an aha moment when you see my son really bond with Courtney. She has a Fitbit watch. So he like sat on her lap and he was like, mm, what is this? And so she was like, oh, do you want to see my watch? And he was like, okay. And so he like tapped it. And so we were trying to work on speech. So we kept saying, tap, 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 tap. Every time she would get a notification or something or she, he would just see it, he'd be like, tap, tap. So that was a cute little moment for both of them. My son is aging out of this therapy and I know that he needs this and he needs to be in a preschool that can support him. So Child Haven, really empowered me as a parent to be a great advocate for my son. And I know for a fact that if there is an issue, that I'm not afraid to talk about it and I'm not afraid to address it. I think it's a huge impact to have that relationship that we've built. For Mason to thrive, for me and my husband both, being able to be a part of it and to help him and to actually see him improving, that definitely helped heal us to just be like, this is our son and we accept him for who he is. and. We know that there are going to be challenges ahead of us, but we can, we're can we stronger as a family. Shelby and Mason's story shows what Child Haven strives to do every day. Empower families so they can thrive without Child Haven in their future. I'm standing here in front of you today because I wish I had Child Haven in my life when I was growing up. In my particular story, I grew up in an abusive household without a father. I found myself always trying to find a male mentor, somebody that was not temporary and gone. Finding someone that I could look up to, someone I could trust, this was a gift that I never had. Without that male mentor relationship, I was lost. I got in a lot of trouble. And if I had Child Haven and those healing relationships mentioned by Shelby and earlier by Anger, 
my childhood and early adulthood would have been fundamentally different. Once I have found my stability, co-founded an organization called Daddy Can Do It Too to help single fathers find their relationships with their children. This is what led me to Child Haven, and now I'm privileged to sit on their board. From therapy to advocacy, from Seattle to New Orleans, the team at Child Haven is tackling childhood adversity at every level to ensure every child and family has access to healing relationships necessary to thrive. Please give today. What you do matters. It can change the trajectory of the life of a child and their family. And this should matter to every single one of us because healthy families means healthy communities. One does not exist without the other. Please dig deep today and help us reach our $150,000 fundraising goal. Back to you, Michelle. Child Haven dares to dream big, and it really is your support that is key. If you haven't already done so, please give by going to the link below and in the chat bar. Now, if you've already given, be audacious. Please think about another stretch gift to help create stronger, healthier families and communities. Now, here are some of my favorite friends who would like to say thank you. Mariposa. It means butterfly in Spanish. When you think of a butterfly, what do you imagine? We imagine colors that inspire play. We imagine wings that take flight with joy. We also imagine a metamorphosis, changing from a curled up chrysalis to one that finds strength and freedom as it unfurls itself. At Camp Mariposa, we see that every day. Children come to us hurting. They are curled up and unsure of themselves. Through art, they find voice. They find empowerment. They find an opportunity to connect with each other and start healing through the connections that they make. The adversity that led them through our doors no longer defines them. Child Haven helps make this possible. Through partnering with their Art with Heart program, we give children the power to fly. This story is repeated time and again. Not just at Camp Mariposa, but throughout all of the Child Haven's programs. Splashes of sadness turn into colors of joy for thousands of children. Our world is now filled with beautiful butterflies. Thank you, Child Haven. Thank you, Child Haven. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for attending this virtual version of the annual Child Haven Luncheon. We are so grateful you joined us today to make a difference in the lives of so many children and families. And we also hope that you've been inspired by the stories of healing through connection. Now we have one final reminder and that is to make your gift today at the link provided below or in the chat bar. You still have time to help us hit or exceed that $150,000 $50,000 goal. We are so very grateful for your continued generosity and compassion for Child Haven.